All right, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to do something a bit different with the tractor, and that is we are going to move this picnic table into the shop because I want to um, sand it down because it's getting a lot of uh, rough edges, and then I want to uh, stain it and then bring it back out. So it is nice out tonight, but we're supposed to get two days of rain, and I want to have this dry so that I can prep it. And I need it for this weekend coming up. So uh, in this video, we're going to grab the Kubota with the pallet forks, pick this up, and take it into the shop. And uh, then we'll just do a quick sanding down, painting it, and then we'll bring it back. A little bit of backstory on this picnic table. When we first moved here, I had put a hockey rink in. And if uh, I can find it, I'll put some pictures of what that looked like. And these were the boards that I had used. But we didn't use it that much for the first year, so I ended up converting it into a picnic table with the help of my brother Scott. And uh, it's been serving the family very well. But it's been a couple years, it hasn't been painted and or hasn't been stained, so we're going to do that. So come along with me while we get the Kubota out of the shop, switch over to the pallet forks, and then we'll come and get this. Okay, so what I'm hoping is I can move the pallet forks out wide enough and then straddle the center section and lift up by the bottom of the seat. So we're gonna try that now.
doesn't fit. I have to drop it off here, rotate it, and we'll just pull it in. So the door is 10 feet, and you saw that the picnic table doesn't fit, so the picnic table... is 12 feet long. 12 feet long. So now we're gonna... <laughs> manual labor? Manual labor it in. <laughs> I knew that was coming. That's why Aiden is here. <laughs> Probably doesn't show up very well how big this picnic table actually is, but it's big. Probably about the same size as the Jeep. Longer. Well, how long is your Jeep? I don't know. It's probably pretty damn close though. That's 14 feet. Okay, so... 14 feet for the Jeep. Damn. Surprise, the Kubota was like... That was sick. It's pretty good. Yeah. There's another reason why having a Kubota is awesome. All right, I'm just going to uh, move the pallets that I moved out, move the bucket that I moved out, and then I'll just bring the Kubota in, and then uh, I'll start by sanding the picnic table. So this is the kind of thing I was talking about. It really gets caught on people's clothing. So I want to try to get that up. Same with here. This is really, really sharp. So just try to get these uh, shaved down a bit. Definitely on the seat as well. This is very rough. So I just want to kind of give it an overall sanding and get rid of these high spots. And then I'm gonna stain it with a wood stain because uh, it needs protecting. So I'll be doing that as well. So I don't wanna like, I don't wanna pick these off. I kinda of wanna just sand it flush. All right, so this is what we've picked up. The Milwaukee Random Orbital Sander, M18. We don't need any batteries because I have them all. It comes with two sanding discs, but I also bought a pack of, uh, how many is in here? 50 and they're 80 grit, and that's basically just to do a quick Sanding of this. I also bought them because I'm going to do some of my fencing as well, so this will help. And I wanted it battery powered so I could do the fences without having to carry electrical cords everywhere. So let's just do a quick unboxing and see what we get in the box. Tape. Ugh. And there we go. Dust shoot on the back. Got a little speed dial on the side. And the trigger. And that's the orbital part of it. And then in the box we have the discs. And this should be the... That's the dust collection chute with the filter. And there is the attachment that can also hook up to a, a shop vac. So that can hook up to your shop vac. And this is the connector 
hook it up to the filtered little plastic bin, which I won't be using. Uh, maybe I'll use it in the shop, but outside I'll just vent it to the air. So we're going to use a uh, 5.0 battery right now. Fully charged. Put it down to one. And it doesn't work. Here we go. So then if we grab the standing disc, it has a felty back on it that for the hook and loop connector, you can kind of see there. I guess you want to line it up with the holes, but there we go. So that's that, and oh, that does a, such a nice job. Wow, that is really nice. There is, that, except for this one that's an indent, there is no high spots on that. So that's, I have a bit here to go this way, but that worked out really well. So that's a quick look at the new M18 random orbital sander. I'm going to come back and start doing all of the top surfaces of the table and the seats and I'll do the edges as well. Okay, so now that we've got the my testing done on this one, um, what I've noticed is that the, the screws are sticking out and they're getting caught on the sander. And there's a couple staples everywhere so I'm just going to go through and tighten all the screws down to make sure they're below the surface of the wood. Make sure there's no high spots that are going to rip the paper of the sanding pad and then we'll get to it. I'm also replacing any of the broken screws. So obviously we have some uh, hardwood or some knots that I'm trying to go through and it has been breaking some of these screws. So I'll just replace them with proper ones. So I got these here. Uh, the one other thing that I noticed is that at the very beginning, I don't know what happened here, but I have the screw is sticking out, so it must have gone in and broken. So I'm just going to take that out. There. So now that all the screws are down on these two boards, I'm going to set up the random orbital sander and go ahead and do these two. I've put the dust collector on the back, so we'll see how that works this time.
Wow, I'm really impressed with that. That's going really well. That took all the high spots off the knots down. So this section went really well. I'm very happy with how it cleaned up this section. I just took off the old one and you can see there's some damage. I think that's from when I hit the screws early on. And it's definitely wearing versus the new one. So I'm just gonna switch it out. What I like about this is that it has the vent holes that you just line up somehow. Like that. And one thing I noticed is in the manual, it says don't leave these attached to the pad when not in use, because there's actually a, a hook and loop gummy system that makes it really stick well when it heats up. But if you leave it on there too long, then the glue can make it almost impossible to take off of the pad and you'll have to replace the pad as opposed to just the sanding uh, paper. So when you're done, take this off and let the pad air out. So let's just keep going on this section. All right, so that's the top done. Let's just go over, let's see how much dust there is in this. So the other night when I did my first tests, I don't know how to get this off of here. I didn't have the dust shoot on and it got all over my jeans. I don't know how to get that off there. I guess I should read the manual. Oh. That's a pretty good filter, actually. Look at that. Let's go dump it in the garbage can. So it was a toss up between the orbital sander or a belt sander. The belt sander was like $400 or $350. The orbital was $150. And I thought I'm not going to use it that much and I don't need the belt sander. Plus, I thought with some of the concave and convex shape of the table, especially this end, I might run into some problem with cupping and having to take down a lot more material. But if 
it probably would have been fine, but I didn't want to spend the money on that. And plus, I wanted it battery powered because I'm going to do some of the fences and I'm going to use the orbital sander on the fence too to knock down some of the, the rough spots and stuff before I paint it. So I will be doing the wooden fencing on the property sometime before fall. I'm just going to use the air compressor to blow out the filter. But we're going to do that outside though. Um, I don't know where I'm going to put you. Wow, is that ever clean? Also, fun fact, if you look in here, I don't know if you can see, there is a barcode right in here. That's a barcode RFID to set off the alarms at the biggest big box store. So that's where they hide it, as opposed to just in the label or something that you could peel off. So, sneaky, but good. All right, so now that that's done, we'll put this back together. And let's see, that two of these tabletop pieces took almost the full charge. This is the Red Lithium uh, XC 5.0. So it did okay. I probably spent half an hour, so not bad. So while the battery's charging, because I can't find my other battery, I think it's in my... I think it's in my uh, chainsaw in the garage. I'm just going to use a screwdriver and we're going to go around and take out all the staples that are in the side of the, the table. I guess I had stapled a uh, tablecloth at one point and all the staples are in there. So we're going to take all those out so they don't catch on anyone's clothing and so they don't rust in the wood. So like that. So I'm gonna go around and do all these. Let me know in the comments what you use for your everyday carry item. Because I've been rocking this uh, Leatherman Juice for about 20 years. Um, and it has never left my side, never lost it. Fun story. So fun story about my Leatherman Juice C2, S2, because it has scissors. We went traveling to New York and we were up at the Rockefeller Tower. And I had it with me and we had to go through a metal detector and we had to put our items in a bin for them to check and I put my leather man in there and I was pulled aside by the security guard and he asked who I was, where I was from and I said I was from Canada and he says, well you're not supposed to bring knives and stuff into the Rockefeller Center and I said I'm very sorry and he goes, well you can have this back as long as you don't fix anything so I was very grateful that he didn't take it and confiscate it Give a big shout out to the security guards at the Rockefeller Center for recognizing a Canadian. And sir, I did not fix anything on that tower that night, but thanks for not keeping my tool. So I'm just gonna go make short work of this with my Leatherman tool and I'll catch you back up when I have them all out. All right, so the next stage is to sand the seats. And this is gonna be really quick because it's just sanding the seats. And I'm gonna sit on the rolly chair. 
using the orbital sander and I'll just make quick work of that. I was hoping to stain it tonight and we're gonna be using this stuff. We'll see how that goes. But the problem is it just started raining like crazy. So, and the humidity is insane. So I don't want to paint it when the humidity is so high because it's basically the wood is all wet and it's soaked up. So hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to drag it out here and it'll burn off any of the moisture in the wood and it'll be nice and sunny and I can stain it then. So let me just get out of it quick. All right, so that's the first side done. We'll do this side next. All right, let's get this side going. Very happy with that. All right, let's see how much dust we collected. I don't know how to get this off of here. Oh, that's a full batch. I probably should have checked that prior to doing the, the other seat. Wow. Probably tell that was full by all the dust everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that is my first ever use of the Milwaukee Random Orbital Sander, and it's the M18 version. And I did notice one thing I wanted to bring your attention to. When you're using the dust collector with the forged battery, there's actually an interference that this doesn't actually fit on very well. There's some, there's a gap here. I don't know how well you can see it, but it doesn't let it go on properly. So this forged battery doesn't really fit properly on this random orbital sander. The old batteries do. Like there's a, there's enough gap there that it doesn't uh, touch, but when you try to put the forged battery on, it actually interferes. So it puts a bit more pressure on the dust collector. So just be aware of that when you're using this random orbital sander. Uh, I'll put the number on it. I know that Milwaukee is coming out with a new one. They just announced it at the pipeline 2024 and I assume that it will fit properly with the forged battery because that's what they're going with. So just be aware of that if you're going to buy the older sander with the forged battery. Oh, or just don't use the dust collector. You can use the attachment for the hose and that'll fit. Plus, it wouldn't fit on here if you're using the uh, 12 milliamp battery either. So let's try that. So 12 milliamp battery. Yeah, that's not fitting on there at all. So, the 6.0 forged just fits, and all the rest of the M18s fit on there fine. So the next step is going to be tomorrow when we take this outside and start to stain it. So, hold on a second, we'll be right back.
All right, so there it is on the side line. We'll just let it warm up a bit in the sun while I prep the Minwax stain and get it ready to go. All right, let's get started. First layer. <laughs> what color is that? <laughs> uh, what, what happened here? Uh, I'm just gonna have to go check with Michelle because that is a slate pigment color. I never noticed that. I thought it was gonna go with a golden color, so that kind of shocked me. So I'll be right back when I check with Michelle. Hold on. Slate. I don't know if you can see it in the sun, but okay. I just checked with Michelle. It is the slate gray. So let's go, let's continue with that. So this is a gel coat. So I have to mix it up. They say not to shake it, and then it says to. Uh, Work on an inconspicuous corner. We're gonna start with the uh, seat and we'll go from there. So let's see how this goes. All right, now it says to wipe off the excess, which I think in this direct sun has already dried. But let's see what we can get off of here. Nope, not gonna happen. All right. So it looks like we're just painting it. I should have just used a uh, gray paint, but uh, now I'm going to go through and do the sides and the stanchions that we can see and I'll come back to it when it's done. I'm not going to record it. There's the first seat done. I'm going to let that dry and then I'll move on to the next one. It's hot, man. Crazy hot. Next time, next time it's worth doing the middle first so you can actually sit and lean on the, uh, on the seats. Just a little, you know, a little something I'm realizing. bottom side of this, it might just be easier to flip it over before I paint the top at all. Honestly, now might be a good time to do that. Honestly, just doing it like this might be the move too. Yeah, way easier than crawling under it like I was. What are you doing? Working. Aww. This bottom section is so tedious. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think this is a way better setup. Yeah, it is. I was thinking we should bring it into the shop and do it in the shop. It's messy, dude. 
Well, it's not really messy. I thought it was going to be a lot wetter, like dripping everywhere. So I appreciate Aiden taking over that while I went inside and cooled off a bit, but I think we're going to actually bring the picnic table in the shop and do it there because it's just too hot. It's like uh, 30, 35 degrees, so I'll put that in Fahrenheit below, but we're going to bring it inside. It's way too hot out there and way too humid too, like really, really stupidly wet. Hey man, what's going on? Nothing sketchy about that. All right, let's, uh, I'm gonna turn you off. We're gonna do the rest of this and we'll come back at you in a moment. All right, now that the bottoms are done, we're just gonna do a massive, quick paint across the top and we'll be done. So let's get on that now. All right, so the table is for all intents and purposes done. It is what I needed to do this time. So I'm just gonna let it uh, dry here for a couple of hours while I do some other stuff, and then I'm gonna come back. Then I'm gonna use the Kubota with the forks to uh, take it back onto the back of the property, and we'll be done. All right, so that is drying, but kind of still tacky after a couple of hours, so we're gonna drag it out into the sun and let it bake. And then we'll, when I'm done cutting the grass, we'll use the tractor and carry it over. So we're just gonna quickly take it out now. All right, so there to stay. Hopefully it will dry up. Um, Aiden made a good point that maybe we did it wrong and we were supposed to put a uh, primer coat first and then this. So we'll see if it stops being tacky. If not, I mean, might have to sand it. I don't know, we'll see. Like this thing says, apply the Minwax pre-stained wood conditioner especially on softwoods for best and even color which so. which we didn't do Good. No, no, no. There you go. Up. Up, up. That's super impressive. That's a heavy table.
All right, so there is the table. We're just going to set up the umbrella that goes with it, and uh, that'll end. And that will end the video on uh, us doing the the picnic table staining. Very happy with that. It's all nicely cured. Again, Kubota does an awesome job at the stuff you need around the property. Highly recommend one. Makes uh, moving this picnic table a breeze. All right, so there's the umbrella. Sweet. Give us some nice shade. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Thank you very much. So what did you do on your land today? Because today, or for the last few days, we took the old picnic table, and actually this is the five year anniversary of building this picnic table. I have some pictures with my brother Scott who was here, and we built this out of the old ring, and then when we built this table. It's 12 feet long, it can hold a lot of people. And uh, we're gonna put it to some good use again. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.